Kemi Amalalu Olunlayo, August 8th, 2019, I.J. Koza. The latest on the Busala Dakolo rape scandal, a legend, Pastor Fatsoyimbo, raped her, the pastor at Koza. The latest news right now is very disturbing. The case is going another direction. Many of you have read the story in The Guardian UK, a British newspaper, an independent newspaper, talking about the Dakolos were forced at gunpoint to sign the papers. Well, specifically Busola Dakolo, many of you did not pay attention to my report on that night. You need to focus. On that night, I reported that police came to the Dakolo's home. Try to stay focused and don't consume yourself with lies and rhetoric. When that van arrived at the Dakolo's home, Timmy saw the van outside. He posted on Instagram men with guns outside his home. Instablog Niger posted gunmen stormed Timmy Dakolo's home. Instablog has a way of hyping headlines. Nobody needs that. And this is why I'm warning bloggers across Nigeria to be careful what they want to use to make money. No gunmen stormed Timmy Dakolo's home. Nobody entered their home. Now, I did a report specifically telling you what happened outside the home. And what happened basically was that Busola was out shopping with an escort. When she arrived at the house, she saw the van. The escort with her was a mobile police officer who did not have the proper papers and license to follow her around. That mobile officer fled the scene. When he saw possibly other police officers he knew that shouldn't see him doing what he was doing, there's a lot of public figures that run around with mobile officers that are not licensed to protect them. And they pay these officers so much money under the table that this one with Busola ran. And Busola then locked herself in the car, which was the right thing to do. This is Nigeria. It could be assassins. You see men with guns inside a van and your officer runs away from you. She locked herself in the car. Her husband was inside, did not come out, but the houseboy was accosted by the men inside the van. They gave him a piece of paper to go give to his ogre. Do you remember me saying that the houseboy should be fired? He was talking to them for a long time and didn't bring the paper to Timmy inside. Timmy called the local police station. Okay, the rapid response squad, RRS, and we saw their car outside. It was when they arrived, that Timmy now came out and he was on the phone talking to someone. You vividly remember those pictures. Now, they wanted to serve them a document. They served Timmy the documents. There were two documents, one for Busala, one for Timmy. After Busala came out of the car, they signed for the documents. The contents of the documents were known to them when it was served to them, okay? Sometimes police have to serve documents to people and have them sign it that they've received it. The same thing happened to me in Portacot. When they gave me bail in magistrate court, they served me a document in federal court. I signed it. I didn't know what it was at first, but it was that my case was also going to federal court. If I hadn't signed it, my case wouldn't be in two courts. But the stupid lawyers, of course, did not tell me that. Okay, they didn't pay attention. They came to serve me at the back of the courtroom. I just signed. At the end of the day, when you're doing a service and you're a police officer, the person on that document is the one that has to sign for the document, not anybody else. And if that person is carrying a gun, there are police officers. America, they've served me many documents in America to come to court. The police officers have a Glock a simple shotgun on the side of the hip. In Nigeria, they're carrying AK-47s. So if that officer was carrying an AK-47 and wanted to sign a document saying that you were into mischief, you were into, what if Fatso Ibo filed against them? Okay, threat to life, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the other side can't have filed something. Just sign the document and go. And that's what happened. They signed the documents and they went inside their house and it was all over. So it was a service, this unmarked police car and undercover officers came to do at their house. 
And for me personally, I didn't like the fact that police weren't in uniform. They should have been in uniform so that they could identify themselves properly. At the end of the day, that's all it was. It's no big deal. Nobody held her at gunpoint and forced her to sign anything. She saw the document. She saw what was on it. Timmy saw his own. They saw what was on it. Okay, and at the end of the day, they signed and they got the document and those officers went. So the hype in the story, okay, you're the one that filed the rape case. That pastor filed a character case. So what does he have to say? The pastor says threat to his life. Busala said fairly, openly, on Tudor's interview, that her brother attempted to stab the pastor after she was raped or something. Okay, so that's an, a threat to life right there. What's to say the brother wouldn't try it now? Okay, so the pastor said criminal mischief, a threat to life. Um, there were other things on there. That's the pastor's view. Get a lawyer and defend those views. No, they have to hype it to another side. So Busola and Simi had to go get a journalist. And that journalist, okay, is a journalist who's affiliated with Chude. Two people wrote that story in the UK Guardian. And the journalist, the male journalist, I believe his name is Ebukbe or something, but he mentioned my name in his article. And the other one was a Senegalese woman or something. Okay, they mentioned my name in the article that I was the only one investigating the case and blah, 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 shading me, calling me the great journalist. She calls herself the great journalist of Nigeria. All that stuff is irrelevant. The Dakolas have been trying to get the case out into the international media, and they have failed so far. CNN's Busari was trying to get it out for them. CNN didn't want to get into it because of legal implications. And that one came after me questioning my history with CNN. All these Bukolas Dakolo sympathizers don't know I'm ahead of them. So the basic bottom line is this guy and this Senegalese woman, they gave this story an international angle. Busala and Simi need to know that no one is interested in their case, okay? They put the Me Too movement in Africa. There, there is a Me Too movement already in Nigeria. It's not an official movement, but we are all against rape. So carrying it to a British newspaper, they'll give you the platform. We have all these African journalists giving them the platform so they can get them out. A source tells me the Dakolos are trying their best to file asylum in the UK and flee. By using the police as, you know, forcing them to sign things at gunpoint, they actually are discrediting the police and defaming the police. The same police that's supposed to investigate your rape charges are the ones you're after now. This case has not been the same, and it has not been real from day one. The Dakolos have no rape case. And I'm going to repeat it. Busola was never raped, and this is an orchestrated, planned witch hunt of a pastor and a church. I've said this on the radio yesterday at Max FM. How is the police going to investigate a case when you're defaming and discrediting them? The police never held them at gunpoint. If everybody had listened to what I said on that night, you'd have understood. When the police wants to serve somebody for child support or any kind of stuff, they have to see you. And if they're carrying an AK-47, it's part of their uniform. I'm investigating the asylum thing. Asylum, I filed it before in Canada. Your country is dangerous. And then they'll grant you asylum. So they'll move their children and their family to England. It's all a scheme, just like it's been from day one. The Dakolos are lying. I'm Kemi Amolodou Olunlaya, the great Nigerian journalist and the only one investigating Koza. Meanwhile, the pastor, Fato Ibo, he's back on the pulpit. He's preaching to his people. Had an energetic service last Sunday. I'm still yet to interview him. The only thing stopping me from interviewing Fatso Ibo is this case. The police have to get done before I can interview him. In a criminal case, no one's supposed to be talking to the media. The Dakolos are talking to UK Guardian because an African, a Nigerian journalist, who got a Future Awards and who owns the Future Awards, Chude, they're all in this web of lies. A lot of journalists have lost their jobs or they're faded because of this investigation. This is yet another one. Thank you for listening, August 8, 2019.